Haven Smith was optioned to AAA to clear up a roster spot for the return of Geraldo Perdomo. But was it the right decision by the Arizona Diamondbacks? Welcome into the Locked on Dimebacks podcast, part of the Locked on Podcast Network, your team every day. You're listening to who? The always charismatic host of this podcast, Miller Thomas, multimedia journalist and I'm a graphic designer. So please go check out my website, millerthomas24.myportfolio.com. On there, you can see all my latest work from my packages to my articles to my photos and my graphic design. If you want to see more content by me, just follow me on Twitter at careerthomas24 for my personal account or look up Lock on Dimebacks, both Twitter and Instagram for the podcast handle. And of course, thank you for making Lock on Dimebacks your first listen every day. I would not be able to do this podcast without you, my loyal listeners, sharing, subscribing, reviewing, doing all that so I could do this podcast for you. Thank you. It's free. It's available on all platforms. So please continue to tell your friends. And one of those platforms is YouTube. So please hit subscribe to Locked on Dimebacks on YouTube. What are we discussing on today's podcast? Geraldo Perdomo is back with the D-backs, which means the D-backs had to make a roster move. Haven Smith being optioned. We'll discuss if that was the right decision. And then why not talk about who's hot, who's not, as we enter the next series against the LA Angels. Today's episode is brought to you by FanDuel. Make every moment more. Right now, new customers get $200 in bonus bets with any winning $5 bet. That's $200 in bonus bets with any winning $5 bet. Visit FanDuel.com slash locked on to get started. All right, let's get into the Locked on Diamondbacks podcast. And let's talk about... The D-backs decision to option Geraldo, per, or not to option Geraldo Perdomo, to option Paven Smith with Geraldo Perdomo returning to the D-backs because I want to know, I want to ask you guys, if you guys think that was the right decision by the D-backs because with Geraldo Perdomo returning, the D-backs had a few options on the table of roster moves that they could have done. They could have optioned Kevin Newman or DFA'd Kevin Newman. They could have optioned Paven Smith to AAA, which they did do. Could have optioned Blaze Alexander, optioned Corbin Carroll, or you could have DFA'd Eugenio Suarez with the return of Geraldo Perdomo. And the D-backs decided to option Paven Smith on their team. And I have to say, I did not agree with that decision by the D-backs. One reason is because Paven Smith, is finally contributing to the D-backs on offense and making plays. Paven Smith um, recently hit a walk-off two-run shot to win it for the D-backs. Paven Smith has one of the best OPSs on this D-backs team. If you could believe it, Smith has a 829 OPS. He has a 518 slugging. Paven Smith is being a positive offensive contributor to the D-backs right now, which is crazy to think about because Haven Smith, as we have known him so far for the Arizona Diamondbacks, is not an offensive player. For some reason, this season, Haven Smith has started to put it together for the D-backs. It's crazy to see, but he's swinging the bat well right now. He's putting good wood on the bat, creating power, which is something that we've always won from Haven Smith. And he's never been able to deliver. That's been his biggest weakness outside of his defense when looking at his player profile. The fact that he's a first baseman with no power. But somehow, some way this season, Paven Smith has been able to tap into that power department for the first time in his career. Yes, it's only three home runs in 27 games, 61 plate appearances, but a 518 slugging. Currently leads the Arizona Diamondbacks. Of course, smaller sample size than a lot of the other players. But still crazy to think, even in any, uh, outside of a three-game, 10-at-bat sample size, the fact that we're 
what, 56 at bats in for the for Paven Smith, and he's leading the D-backs in slugging. Crazy to think about. Five doubles, three home runs. He's displayed power this season, and that's why the second reason why he can't be sent down. Not only is he playing well, contributing on offense, but the D-backs' lack of power, the fact that their only guy that's hitting for power right now, I mean, Christian Walker, Ketel Marte as well, but outside of those two, not a lot of power from a lot of these D-backs players. And with Haven Smith leading the team in slugging, you just can't send down a guy like that who is contributing so much to your offense. Ketel Marte, he has a 504 slugging. And then Jock Peterson, 493. He's third. Christian Walker's at 455. Haven Smith is clearing Christian Walker right now in terms of slugging percentage, which is crazy to think about. So that's why I didn't want Haven Smith to be optioned. I thought with his bat, the way he's swinging right now, Peyton Smith deserved to stay on the roster with Perdomo returning. And I think what we all wanted to happen was Eugenio Suarez to get DFA'd because of how bad he's been this season for the D-backs. His defense is really good, but offensively, he's currently batting 200 with a sub-600 OPS, and he's providing no power. 317 slugging is only above the Corbin Carrolls and the Tucker Barnharts on this team. Eugenio Suarez is a guy that came into the D-backs with expectations of, yes, we know he's going to strike out, but if he can at least provide power and some over-the-fence pop, we'll take the strikeouts. But right now, he is only striking out for the D-backs. 74 Ks already this season, and he is not providing the home runs, and the power, not even the extra base hits like we would want from Eugenio Suarez. So we all wanted him to be the guy that gets DFA'd when Perdomo gets back. But it sounds like the D-backs are listening on offers for Eugenio. I don't know what they think they're going to get for Eugenio. I think eventually they will have to DFA him. Right now for Eugenio, he has until Alec Thomas gets back from injury because once Thomas gets back, if Eugenio doesn't show signs of, doesn't show signs of life offensively, and the D-backs still don't have a trade, by then, I think then it's time to DFA Alec Thomas. The other options that the D-backs could have done instead of Geraldo, instead of optioning Paven Smith with Geraldo Perdomo returning, you could have got rid of Kevin Newman. I like the fact that the D-backs didn't do that. I think Kevin Newman defensively, he's been fine. He's better than Blaze Alexander. And offensively, there has been times where where Kevin Newman has really carried this offense for a couple weeks at a time where he's a top three D-backs player offensively, which is crazy to think about. Yes, he's in a little bit of a slump right now, but I think Kevin Newman has done enough to justify his role on the team over a guy like Eugenio Suarez, at least. Option Blaze Alexander. I know defensively he hasn't been up to snuff this year, but offensively I just think he's still way too important to what the D-backs want to do, and I want to develop him as a defense player, and I want him to do that on the major league level. And then Corbin Carroll, you're just not going to option Corbin Carroll. If he goes down to the minors and he sucks, and then it's like, uh, kind of hard to promote Corbin Carroll when he's batting 230 in AAA. I don't want to see him get down there and get even more frustrated. Like, if Corbin Carroll gets option and then he still struggles against AAA pitching, like, your career could be cooked at that point. So, like the fact that the D-backs didn't option Carroll, didn't option Blaze, didn't option Newman, I, I don't like the fact that they optioned Paven Smith, but I don't think that should have been their choice either. When going through all the options, I think the only logical choice was to DFA Eugenio. Now, if you're telling me you're waiting on an offer then I think second on that list would have been to get rid of Kevin Newman, to be honest. Paven Smith, I think, is contributing too much on offense. Blaze Alexander contributing a lot on offense as well. I know defensively he has his struggles, but his bat, I think, is too good. And he's still a young player that we're trying to develop. I would rather try to develop Blaze Alexander than just keep throwing out there a journeyman uh, veteran infielder who is mid-offensively and just slightly above average defensively like Kevin Newman is really not all that I would much rather have Blaze Alexander than a Kevin Newman so for the D-backs I don't agree with their Paven Smith decision but of all the options um 
I, I think the option I would have would I think the option I would have went with is to DFA Eugenio Suarez. Obviously, it doesn't sound like the D backs are doing that. I guess Kevin Newman would have been second on the chopping block for me. Glad to see Geraldo Perdomo returning. Like I've said before, I don't think he's going to change life for the D-backs. Some people think he's going to be a catalyst that sparks this offense. I do think he will help. I love him from a play discipline standpoint. Takes great pitches, doesn't swing at garbage, doesn't strike out a ton. I love that. But do I think he's going to change life offensively? No. I think we're starting to see life change offensively for the D-backs recently because guys are finally starting to turn it on. That's the only thing that could change this D-back season for guys to start playing better. And it feels like that's finally starting to happen. Guys are finally starting to heat up. And that's what we'll talk about in segment number two. Who's hot? Who's not? But in conclusion, not happy with Haven Smith being optioned to AAA. Happy to see Domo return, but wish it wasn't Paven Smith being sent down to AAA. But now I want to talk to you guys about this little hack that I use to get money back on my groceries. Because if you want money back on your groceries, then this little app that you need to use is called Ibotta. Spring has sprung, and that means spring cleaning, whether that means stocking up on cleaning supplies or swapping out your winter clothes for new spring clothes. Make sure you're using Ibotta and get real cash back with every purchase. Ibotta is a free app that gives you the most cash back every time you shop on hundreds of items from groceries to beauty supplies to toys, so you can make sure you're beating inflation no matter what you're purchasing. The average Ibotta user earns $256 per year. That could cover the cost of an entire shopping trip, that flight you've been eyeing, or that fancy dinner you've been craving. Join the over 50 million users and earn cash back every time you shop from over 2,700 brands and retailers, including all your favorite groceries. Grocery stores, Lowe's, Macy's, Sephora, Best Buy, and more. Right now, Abada is offering our listeners five dollars just for trying Abada by using the code Locked On MLB when you register. Just go to the App Store or Google Play Store and download the free Abada app to start earning cash back. And use code Locked On MLB. That's I B O T T A in the Google Play or Apple App Store, and use code Locked On MLB. And if you want to wage on daily fantasy sports, then the best app to use is Prize Picks because Prize Picks is America's number one fantasy sports app with more than 5 million members. It is the most fun, exciting way to get in on the action while you watch your favorite sports and players. You just pick more or less on two or more player stats for a shot to win up to 100 times your cash. With Prize Picks, you can turn $10 into $1,000 in a single game watching your favorite sports this summer. You can make your prize picks lineup in as little as 60 seconds. You just need to pick more or less on two to six player stats projections, and you're locked in. There's always action on prize picks, and this is the perfect time to try out something new as basketball is winding down. Make sure to try out eSports this month. Because for every Wednesday and Saturday in June, if your lineup doesn't win, you'll get your entry fee back. Choose from Counter-Strike 2, Call of Duty, League of Legends, and more. My favorite thing to do is to take more on Corbin Carroll stolen bases and more on Ketel Marte total bases. And when that hits, it brings a big smile to my face. If you want to smile on your face, download the app today and use code LOCKDOWNMLB for a first deposit match up to $100. Again, Download the app today. Use code locked on MLB. Prize picks. Pick more. Pick less. It's that easy. All right, all right, all right. Let's get back to the Locked on Dimebacks podcast. And let's talk about who's hot, who's not. We'll talk about the lineup first, some of the position players, about who's hot, who's not. The craziest thing is, again, small sample size, but Paven Smith was leading the team in OPS over the last week. Now, was it just nine at-bats? Was it only three hits? Yes, but because of that, he was leading the, leading the team in OPS over the last week. But if you want to talk about some real people who have a larger sample size than that, Ketel Marte has been on fire over the last week against the two NL West opponents. He really crushed his division foes over his last seven days, five games. He has a 1079 OPS, a 421 average. 
He has been striking out a ton. Three walks to four Ks. Keta Marte, ever since being really cold after his little hitting streak, he is starting to heat up once again. Both sides of the plate, he looks good. Feels like he's just getting the barrel to the ball every time and just lining it up for just smoked singles and line drives and doubles in the gap. Like for Marte, it's not just the fact that he's displaying some over-the-fence power this year. It just feels like whenever he hits the ball, it's flying off his bat. He is one of the best players on the team in terms of hard hit percentage and the hard contact stats. So Marte's looking really good at the plate right now. He's hot, and he's not the only one. A lot of players in this D-backs lineup is, are, are playing really well right now, and I think that's why you see this D-backs offense looking so good recently because when players play well, hit the ball, surprise, surprise, runs go on the scoreboard. Jake McCarthy, over his last six games, he's 5 for 15. Keta Marte was 8 for 19, I mind you. Jake McCarthy, 5 for his last 15. That's a 333 average with a 1057 OPS. He's got a home run. He has been driving in runs no matter where he's been in the lineup. It does not matter if there's a righty or a lefty on the mound. And Jake McCarthy, actually right now, batting really well against lefties this season. He has been so instrumental to the D-backs with... Alec Thomas going down. Corbin Carroll and Lourdes Gurriel struggling this year. Jake McCarthy is back. 2022 Jake McCarthy is back. There's rumors right now that teams like the Philadelphia Phillies are interested in a Jake McCarthy. Well, guess what? The D-backs should not trade for McCarthy. He's been available the last two years, and now that he's playing well again as the D-backs best outfielder, still super young, still super fast, I would much rather keep Jake the Rake and see how much his offensive ceiling can climb because he's starting to add a little pop in that bat. And if Jake McCarthy starts slugging that ball, uh, watch out. He might end up being a pretty good everyday major leaguer. Lourdes Gurriel, He's starting to pick it up as well. Like we're saying, a lot of these D-backs players are starting to play well. He's 8 for his last 22 over the past week. 364 average, a 1,008 a OPS, one home run, but leads the team in RBIs over the last week. Six ribbies, and that's what made Lords Goriel so important the first 20 games of the year. If you go back and look, Goriel had one of the most productive starts in D-backs franchise history to start the season. He had like 20 RBIs, like the first 15 games, like on fire. Uh, NL player of the week, like the first week of the season, like... Gurriel was looking like the MVP front runner after the first three weeks. Then he went in a tailspin, but now starting to heat up a little bit again. Not as much double play ball, starting to lift the ball a little bit more, starting to drive the ball a little bit more. Lords Gurriel starting to play better over his last week, and that's really nice to see. And then Corbin Carroll over his last six games, he is seven for 21, which means he has a three. A 333 average. And what's the most important? Three walks to only one strikeout for Corbin Carroll. Not striking out, which is a great sign. He's not going up there and getting frustrated with himself. He is putting the ball in play, and good things are happening. Two steals as well during that time. Do we want to get the slugging up? Yes, a 381 slugging right now during that stretch, which means it was a lot of just infield singles and just getting through the holes and maybe a couple bloops in there, but we'll take the 333 average. We'll take the 417 OBP. The slugging is definitely something that has to get better. Grichik, he's three for his last eight. He's playing well. Blaze Alexander, five for his last 16. He swing the bat well. Kevin Newman, six for his last 19. He swing the bat well. Like, you go up and down. I just named you eight D-backs players who are hot right now with over a 300 average, if you could believe that. The dudes in the lineup who are not doing much, Eugenio Suarez, of course, we're not even going to talk about his numbers over the last week because the whole season he's been bad. But Christian Walker did not do much against the NL West. He was five for his last 23, which is a 217 average, 565 OPS, no home runs, nine strikeouts to zero walks for Christian Walker. So a very tough week for him. Same with Jock Peterson, seven strikeouts in the past week. He was three for 17, 176 average, 535 OPS. And then Gabriel Moreno, who has been struggling all season, struggled this past week. He is three for his last 17 as well. He's not striking out, which is good, but he's also drawing no walks. 1K over the past week with zero walks. We need more from Gabby. 
because he has been such a struggle this year. Like, I'm okay Walker and Jock Peterson having a down week because they've been, what, two of the three best D-backs offense players for a majority of the season. They can have a down week. But a guy like Gabriel Moreno, he has been not that good offensively this year. He has definitely not as been, he definitely hasn't been as good last year. Consistency with the bat, just his contact skills have not been as good this year. And so for Gabby, we definitely need much more from him because he still is the catcher of the future. Defensively, he's still a stud. And offensively, we know he has more in the tank. We know he has more pop than what we've seen from him this year because so far we have seen no power from Gabriel Moreno this season. 325 slugging. So Gabby is definitely someone that has to pick it up, just like the rest of the lineup who is starting to heat up. Corbin Carroll starting to heat up. Lloyds Gurriel starting to heat up. Let's hope Gabby and Moreno can join the heat up train. And we'll talk about which pitchers are hot and who's not in segment number three. But hey, if you want to place any wagers down on the D-backs to win their series against the Los Angeles Angels, then the place you want to do that, of course, is going to be FanDuel because FanDuel is the best place and America's number one sports book. Summertime means baseball, the NBA Finals, and more, and you can bet it all on FanDuel. Right now, new customers get $200 in bonus bets with any winning $5 bet. That's 200 bucks you can bet from the finals MVP to who's going to hit one out of the ballpark. Visit FanDuel.com slash locked on and add a big win to your summer bucket list. My favorite thing to do on FanDuel is the same game parlay. Give me Corbin Carroll steal over on Ketel Marte total bases and give me D-backs money line. When that hits, I love seeing my bank account grow. And if you want to see your bank account grow, just visit FanDuel.com. FanDuel, America's number one sports book. All right, all right, all right. Let's get back to the Locked on Dimebacks podcast. Let's talk about who's hot, who's not, pitching edition, because when you look at the numbers over the last week for who's hot, the bullpen is starting to play better. But right now, there is a pretty hard and divisive line in the bullpen between the top five and the rest of the group out there because it, it's a it's a struggle, to be honest, when looking at at some of the bullpen numbers. Like the D-backs have five good relievers right now that they can trust. Kevin Ginkle, four innings pitch over his last week. No earned runs for the Gink man. Now, only one strikeout. We want to see him pick it up a little bit more. Four hits in those four innings pitch. So he still gives up a couple hits and he's not getting the case. He looks a lot better than where he was when he had to be the setup man or the closer at times this season. I think right now, being that go-to guy in the sixth inning or to get the final out in the fifth inning before you pitch into the sixth, like I think I think it's a perfect role for Ginkle right now. It's low pressure, but he can still come in in a high leverage moment. Maybe not late in the game, high leverage moment, but he can still come in the game where it's meaningful, uh, you know. There could be runners on. There, the back could be against the wall for you, potentially, with how many inherited runners are on the bases right now if you're Kevin Ginkle. So it could still, maybe not as pressurized as the 8th or ninth, but there could still be some pressure, still some high leverage qualities to those outings for Kevin Ginkle. So love seeing him come out and dominate those 5th and 6th innings right now. Just want to see him rack up the strikeouts a little bit more. Joe Mantiply. His last three innings pitch, no earned runs. He's looking really good. He's not walking anybody. He's got a couple strikeouts over the last week. Man's play, we have his ups and downs with him. We call him Joe Multiply at times. But right now, he is the go-to lefty specialist for the D-backs. And he has been good at times as that little opener when the D-backs do have to do that as well. Justin Martinez, he has been electric all season. And he continues to be electric for the D-backs. 2.1 2.1 innings pitch this past week. No earned runs, of course. And only three strikeouts for a Justin Martinez, who is prone to get big strikeout numbers. He has been elite with the sinker, the split finger, the fastball. Like, he has the complete arsenal. The pitches have movement. They have drop. They have heat. They have velo. He is starting to come into his own. And Justin Martinez is definitely being groomed to be the closer of the future. 
Paul Seawald, he is an expiring contract. Do I think Martinez will be the closer by next season? No. I think Seawald comes back on a short-term deal. But two years from now, 2026, Martinez, closer for the D-backs, I think that's definitely in the cards. Paul Seawald, over the last week, two innings pitch, no earned runs. Exactly what you want from Paul Seawald. Two saves as well, three strikeouts. Paul Seawald has been absolutely nails since coming back from injury this season and can see why he was so missed for this bullpen because the bullpen has really started to make a lot more sense ever since Seawald has come back. 0.87 ERA, absolutely nasty for the D-backs out of the pen this year. Good strikeout numbers, good walk numbers. Seawald is the man. I love his emotion. I love his bravado, and he is crushing for the D-backs out the pen. Ryan Thompson, two innings the last week, and of course, no earned runs. He has been a godsend ever since the D-backs picked him up off the waiver wire. He continues to dominate on the year. One ear ray flat on the season. Does he give up a decent amount of hits? Does he give up a decent amount of hits from time to time? 8.3 hits per nine? Yes, but when you give up no home runs, you don't walk people, you can except a few hits given up from time to time. Still, his whip is 1.037, which is crazy. Paul Seawald's whip right now, ten. In, he's got 10.1 innings pitch. Paul Seawald's whip right now, 0. .484. I'm going to say it again, 0. .484. Like the D-back with like the second best whip, like Justin Martinez, his whip is 1.174. Ryan Thompson, 1.037. Paul Seawald, 0. 484. He has been crazy this year. And then finally, the other reliever who has been really good for the D-backs over the past week, Paven Smith. One inning pitch, no earned runs. Of course, joking, but love to see Paven in his one outing do his due diligence. Who has been bad for the D-backs? Everyone in the bullpen outside the five I just named. Vieira, he's cooked. He has not been good. I don't like him. I'm out on Vieira. Scott McGuff, he came back. He gave up an earned run. Didn't take long for him to give up a home run. I'm out on Scott McGuff, and we will always be out on Scott McGuff. Slade Ciccone, he was fine in his most recent outing. Three earned runs over 4.1 innings pitch. I'm not mad at him. Bryce Jarvis did not have the best week. Three earned runs, four innings pitch, but he's a guy where it's like two weeks he's good, two weeks he's bad. Two weeks he's good, two weeks he's bad. Like He has a 3.75 year rate on the season, and that feels right around where it should be. Between a 3.7 and a 4.2 is where Bryce Jarvis has pitched all year. And over the past week, he wasn't good. But check in next week, and he might go four innings, no earn runs with six Ks. That is the Bryce Jarvis experience. Tommy Henry came back and debuted for the D-backs yesterday. Still out on Tommy Henry. Fought, not good in back-to-back -back starts. Needs to get it together. Logan Allen, he's bad. Six earned runs over four innings pitches past week. I hate Logan Allen. I'm out on him. Brendan Hughes, also out on him. Three earned runs over the last two innings pitch. Both of them are not good. Humberto Castellanos, we are out on Humberto. He has been good in AAA all season. He comes to the major leagues immediately. You're like, this guy still doesn't have it. When you top out at 88, I am just not going to trust you as a major leaguer. Five earned runs over his last 2.1 innings pitch. He's done. Hughes is done. Allen, I'm done. Henry, I'm done. McGough, I'm done. Vieira, I'm done. Any of those back-end bullpen for the last three spots, all of them have been a rotation of horrendousness. I think best-case scenario for the D-backs, you get healthy at the trade deadline, and then you put you, your top five is going to be Ginkle, Mansupply, Martinez, Seawall, Thompson, and then I hope once the rotation gets healthy, you can fill out the back end of the bullpen with the Jarvis, um, with the, uh, did I say Jarvis already? Ginkle, Mantiply, Martinez, Seawald, Ryan Thompson, Jarvis. So you actually have six dudes you don't feel awful about. The first five are definitely better than Jarvis. Jarvis is six, and I'm hoping that six, then I'm just hoping that seventh and eighth guy can just be Ryan Nelson and like a Slade Ciccone or like a Blake Walston. Like I think the last two spots in the D-backs bullpen need to be these long relievers who are just not good at starters. The, the Ryan Nelsons, the Slade Sacconis, like I think I actually like their pitching arsenals. They actually do throw very hard, but I think they're better relievers than starters over the course of a ball game. Like we know the Slade numbers, he's the elite the first time through and then struggles then after that. That doesn't scream reliever, then I don't know what does. So 
I do think there is a lot of potential for the D-backs bullpen to get even better in the second half. As the rotation gets healthy, you move those fill-in rotation pieces to the bullpen in the back end, and then you never know what can happen in the second half of the season as this D-backs team gets healthy. Hopefully, it translates to a way better record. But in terms of the here and now, who's hot, who's not, D-backs offense, a lot of guys looking good. Bullpen, a lot of guys pitching well as well. The starters not doing so hot for the D-backs recently, and that's the area that needs to be better. Ryan Nelson, Brandon Fott, Jordan Montgomery, Slade Sacconi, like everyone who is having to step up and fill in right now, need to be better. The bullpen's doing their job. The offense is doing their job. Let's see if the starters can do their job in the next series against the Los Angeles Angels. Now that's it for this edition of the Locked on Dimebacks podcast. Come back tomorrow for more Dimebacks news coverage and insight. And as always, stay safe, stay healthy. Doses.